Most designers don't realize this, but it's not just the fonts and colors that are making your website feel junior. In this video, we're gonna take a junior site and transform it to something looking a lot more professional. We're gonna take a look at the colors, the fonts, the layouts, the images, everything that we need to do to take the site to the next level. And hopefully from this video, you can take away some tips to apply to your own website. Let's get started with the very first tip in our example of the site. All right, so in this case, we have two separate hero header designs. I'm only doing a hero header because this is a YouTube video and it's gonna take a really long time to do a full site. I have a course that breaks down all the flow of a professional website if you want to take a look at that. But in this case, let's take a look at what we have here. We have two almost identical web design layouts, but they feature some differences. Number one, colors, number two, fonts, number three, layout, spacing in that case. And then number four, we also have some differences in some button placements and things like that. So let's take a look at exactly what's going on here. When taking a look at our two different designs here, if I just tried to go one above the other, just like that, we can see that there is some differences in our designs. The first one I wanna take a look at is gonna be the spacing because I think spacing is one of the most important aspects when it comes to professional looking design and non-professional looking design. So this is all built inside of Framer. We can see here that if we hover over the different elements, we can see that one looks a little bit more neat if we take a look at this one down here, everything is nicely inside of its panel, inside of its square, whereas this one feels a little bit more chaotic. Taking a look at the columns here, we'll see that they're all pretty much with the same exact layout. I mean, it is the same exact layout, I know because I built this, but if we go into the text here, into the columns, we'll see that the text themselves, in this case, we see that number one, the font size is pretty large. The font itself, in this case, Arial Hebrew, is gonna be a little bit more basic. And most importantly, the sizes here are fixed. Fixed is going to be the most constraining thing when it comes to spacing. Fixed heights on your fonts don't allow the content to breathe. You're forcing it to be a specific size throughout different panels. Now you only want it to be fixed in cases where you have a specific reason. For example, if you have an absolute design that's floating in midair and you need it to be that specific size or you need a button to be a specific size or whatever the case is in specifics, then you use fixed. In most cases, relative is fine. If not relative, then I don't know, fill, maybe fit, something like that. In this case, fit works for us. And if you don't know exactly which one to use, just go through all of them until it fits your design the way you want it to. So I'm gonna go through all of these different elements here and just type in fit or fill until it does whatever we actually want it to do. And I can see that it's starting to grow. The design is starting to look a little bit nicer, a little bit more spaced out, but the width here is still fixed. So let's go ahead and hit fit. And that looks a little bit insane. So let's go here and go into fit and hit fill. Okay, and now we can see that we've actually moved our button down. It's still not perfect. Let's go into fit. And this is basically the same exact thing that we're gonna be doing throughout the entire video. It's just making sure that what we've got actually makes sense. Okay, so now we can see that it looks a lot better already. Let's move on to our second part, which is actually gonna be the typography. And I'm gonna include the spacing of the typography as part of the typography. We can see that balance is gonna be a big piece of the puzzle here. By having a single word on its own line, things feel unbalanced. Down here with our pro version, we can see that now we have, I think it's the same font in this case because it's resulting in, in the default one because I don't have the, the two fonts installed here, but we can see that home by being on its own line feels like it's unbalanced. So it's a very simple way to do this. We just grab this. We can make it fixed in this case if we wanted to just for demonstration purposes and we can move that in. Now here, this is where we were. This is where making everything fit took us. And then down here is where we wanna be, somewhere in between where it feels balanced. We can do the exact same thing down here by moving this just for the sake of, of viewing things. Now that does work, but the best way to do this instead of moving things with fixed is by adding a little bit of padding. So we can go in to the left and the right here and we can add in as much padding as we need to add. So in this case, I'm just gonna add 90 just to see where that takes us. And we can probably prop that up to, I don't know, maybe like 220. 
okay, and I see that there's something wrong here. It's because we made it fixed, of course it is. So we can fit the content or we can fill. All right, fill is fine. Fill in this case as well. And we can see that it's starting to look exactly how we want it. Now, in most cases for spacing, the rule of thumb is using multiples of four or eight. The reason being, if I grab this quick four point grid, if I zoom in here, we'll see that things can scale in a very appealing way when they're multiples of four. You can do this also with a multiple of 12 or eight. I think I use multiples of eight most of the time. I'm not specifically sure, but try to stick with those numbers. Don't just go like, I'm just gonna make it 35 and this one 53 and that one 12, you know, because things start to look a little bit weird. So in our case, when we go to this gap here, we'll see that we have a 24. And if I hold shift, it allows us to go in multiples of, I think it's either, yeah, it's eight, in multiples of eight. So that allows us to always stick within those multiples. So in this case, we wanna just do the exact same, spacing is all over the place here. So let's go ahead and just increase that. In this case, we can go, I don't know, 40 is fine. So then we can see that if we go back into Framer and we can move this up and down, I believe that's because it's the default within Framer for some reason, they do multiples of 10, but multiples of eight is also perfectly fine. All right, then let's go on to this button here. We can see that we've got buy button and learn more versus only one single button. This basically allows the user to have a primary button to do the main action versus secondary button if they're not completely sure yet. In this case, we have buy now and then learn more. So if they're not particularly sure that they wanna just jump into the buy now, they can click on learn more and it'll take them to the next part of the site without committing to that action of buying now. So by doing this, we can just double click this here and change this to, I don't know, we can do learn more, we can do explore the site, whatever you want. And here we can add in a secondary color. In this case, we, I don't know, we can make it, uh, we can make it transparent actually, because that's what I have in my pro design there. Click on learn more, and then we can just grab the color from that green one. So it's all about making our lives easier here. Radius, we can go, with the border here, and then just give it that same green. All right, so now we've got buy products and learn more. In this case, having a radius around our buttons is perfectly fine, but in my experience, if you add in a completely rounded button, it allows the user to feel less threatened in a way. Now, an example of this is gonna be apple.com. They have, of course, rounded buttons. Apple uses them, I'm not sure if you know Apple, um, but we have a lot of rounded buttons here. So let's go ahead for our case here and just add in 100. Okay, that's all good. And then finally, let's take a look at the colors here. So colors is gonna be super important. Without having harmony in your colors, everything is gonna feel a little bit out of whack. So let's go back to our design system here. If you don't have a design system, it is super, super easy. Take a look at this video here to figure out how I built this exact thing. But down here we have a scale of colors all the way from light green to super duper dark. And you might be asking, what on earth is that neon green doing there then if you have that design scale? And that's exactly correct. So we can go ahead and just change these colors to match our design scales. Now I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this and paste it inside a framer from Figma so that we can just go ahead and select the color that we need here. So let's start off by selecting this background green here. And we can select, I think, the lightest green that allows us to, I don't know, it's the closest thing to white. It's the easiest color to, to visually understand when you're just looking at a ton of different websites, light and white. Just for me, it's the crispest color that you can, that you can select, all right? But that's just me. That's just my opinion, okay? Then down here, we have a color here that's now being hidden because we picked dark green. So we can maybe go for this 600 here, and we can just keep selecting 600 if we wanted to, but let's go ahead and do something a little bit different. Okay, so we can go ahead and just select this super dark green, which is basically black. Okay, so now we're starting to look a little bit better. In this case, we are missing some super nice shadows, which we can do in Figma, but luckily Framer has a native option to do this. So we go into effects, 
we click on hover if we wanted to. So in this case, we can add in diffusion, we can add in focus, we can add in whatever it is that we want. Okay, so in this case, by adding this here, let's select the same color. We can go back here, add in some diffusion, maybe like that, maybe make it way larger because that's how it looks in my example. Now you don't need to focus on my example per se, but I think it's a nice example because Better Shadows does it very well. Okay, so now that we have our final design here, let's go ahead and just prop it back up to compare. Which design, let me know in the comments, do you think looks more professional? Do you think the original one does where you're trying to explore your creativity and there's nothing wrong with that? Or do you think this bottom one feels more professional where we have some set guided rules, unfortunately, to follow our design? We have established a certain spacing path, fonts, typography, colors, and some effects like shadows, things like that, button roundness if we wanted to. Let me know which option you prefer. There's no right option. There definitely is. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.